The transmission echoed across the vast expanse of known space, carrying whispers of unrest from a distant quarantine zone. Whispers turned to murmurs as trading ships vanished, leaving uncertainty in their wake. Was it the work of pirates or a symphony of misfortune? Yet the gravity of the situation remained elusive until the arrival of a formidable military presence. The siren explorer flotilla's distress call pierced the silence, drawing a reluctant response that escalated into a full-fledged fleet deployment to secure Zone TS-01. The unprecedented reaction of the blood drinkers spoke volumes, eclipsing even past crises like the Nero mindworm outbreak. As attempts at concealment faltered, the Farim, relentless in their pursuit of truth, breached high command channels, unearthing a danger too great to ignore, a threat that endangered the entire core galactic unity. As it stands when asked about secrets, the Siren denied all inquiries about their endeavors in that part of the galaxy. Any time another council race asked to review their findings, they were instantly rejected and told to forget about any rumors. But those rumors soon evolved into speculations. Once colony worlds close to that sector went dark, investigators were sent by the dozens to uncover the mystery, only to end up missing. We must know what is happening. Lacking information puts all the civilized races in danger, declared Magistrate Arho of the Grangsha, a stocky people deriving from a desert world, the Grangsha's homeworld taught them to survive, not only the harshness of the blistering sun in their system, but also to prepare for the cold, hard realities that awaited them once they plunged into space. A plague could be brewing. A hostile species might be preparing for conflict. If we are to overcome any of these situations, then we must prepare. But first, we must know what the Siren discovered. More and more calls from the galactic community pushed the Siren to tell of their endeavors. It came to the point that they were sanctioned for their non-cooperation. Higher taxes, fewer fuel supplies for their ships, and a growing lack of foodstuff for civilians eventually forced them to concede. At a time of uncertainty, all shall know of what was happening in Zone TS-01. Whether in their abodes, at their workstations, or out in the cities, people huddled close to their chosen vid projectors to watch this special announcement. What would the man say to everyone? The Grand Assembly Hall of Tilivar Prime, home of the Galactic Council, convened. Once filled with murmurs and mutterings, all went silent as the Corley Magistrate stood up from her podium. Having a powerful set of throats, she didn't need the aid of any audio-improving device. Ambassador Mirenz, proceed towards the stand. Her voice rippled across the entire hall. Camera drones whizzed and hovered up to get a better angle at the siren. Each closed in on the gray leatherskin ambassador as he solemnly took his place. A coat of refined Dashen wool, tinted in a supple hue of purple, opulently demonstrated his standing among his society. Yet before this multi-species gathering, his refined taste mattered little in their mind. Mirenz's eyes, dark as the empty space, acted akin to a mirror as it reflected the faces before him. A tribunal from the core galactic unity called for his kind to answer deeply troubling questions regarding one of the quarantined zones in the galaxy, and it fell to him to provide them. Ambassador Mirens, the avian figure of the Yosk's magistrate called his name. We understand that you were tasked by your government to report to us about what is happening in this zone TZ-01. Yes, I am. Mirens' voice echoed as if he was talking in front of a fan. We trust that you shall not leave a single matter undisclosed? Mirens lowered his gaze. For the good of us all, I can't deny your request for information. The magistrates gazed at each other while murmurs kicked back up. Then, please, Ambassador, kindly inform us of the situation. Mirens took a deep breath. His clawed hands fell against the wood of the podium. As you are all aware, for the last months, colony worlds belonging to us and to our allies have suddenly gone dark in their communications. Per routine, multiple agents were dispatched to investigate the matter, but they too have suffered the same ill fate. After much deliberation, my government made one last venture and, with the might of one our fleets, pierced the shadowy veil that covered this enigma. And what did you find? The Corley magistrate asked. Mirren suddenly felt his lips dry. No time to ponder over it, he had to answer. Will we found the consequences of our actions? Elaborate, Ambassador. What do you mean by this? This situation was a blasting charge waiting to detonate. 
This whole conundrum started not months ago, but farther back, two under 43 years to be precise. On that time, one of our explorer flotillas scouted for habitable worlds to aid siren colonization. During their forays, they uncovered a system that piqued our interest. Composed of eight primary worlds surrounding a yellow star, we searched each planet for resources and terraforming interest. Each held profitable mining opportunities. Even with the danger that a yellow sun can possess to my people, with its terrible radiation, we have the capacity to turn it into a red star, suitable for us to function without the need of life suits. Mirin's finger tapped against the wood. Then we uncovered a sentient species living on one of those worlds. Again, the room filled with muttering. Loud banging against the podium silenced the voices immediately. One of the magistrates stood up. The Lultian representative, a race of mollusk-like individuals, spoke. You encountered another species capable of thought and did not inform the unity? You are quite aware of the consequences for such an action, correct? Few thought it impossible to see a siren sweat. Yet here was Mirens, with drops of moisture, pooling at his U-shaped forehead and dripping down their cheeks. Yes, I... I am. The ambassador squinted his eyes and frowned. The burden of exposing the actions of his government shouldn't have fallen to him alone. Yet, for the good of the galactic community, he must continue to speak. I am aware. However, our failure of divulging this was not the only crime committed by the Siren government. Every magistrate now held worried looks upon them. What other crimes have you committed? We... He felt short of breath. His words weight heavy on his tongue. A shaky claw moved to a pocket and fished out a tube filled with Cordell 135 brandy. Ambassador, there is to be no consumption of inebriating liquids during an assembly. Underst. I am aware of it, Magistrate, Myrens barked. I am aware of the consequences of my actions, as I am aware of what my government did to the people of that planet. Clear distraught laid etched upon their face, Myrens bitterly said. We butchered them. Myrens finished his drink in one gulp. We defiled their world, took their blood, and in our madness, used it to marinate their planet, hoping to make it into an unending fest for all siren. Gracious gods, said Kundali, the wide-eyed Farim magistrate. The hall had erupted from whispers to loud utters. Sitting upon her seat, Kundali covered her muzzle as she tried to come to terms with the horror. Then the Holovids were true. We hoped they were some sick forgeries. But the events were indeed of your own making. Magistrate Kundali, a fellow council member, grabbed her shoulder and gently rocked it. Are you all right? Silence, loudly cried the Corley magistrate. Her mighty voice overcame the hall. Order again came to be. Kundali? Again, she heard her name. Snapping form her stupor, she gazed into her fellow counselor. The syndicate granted me access to information regarding Siren activities. I was instructed to present the evidence if the ambassador denied the accusation, but I hoped that it wasn't real. All eyes fell to her now. The magistrate holds such incriminating information? Then she must put it into display. Kundali, have you something to share with us? The Korla asked. Nodding, Kundali answered. We do. A small white drone hovered towards her. Her furred hand touched its smooth surface, soliciting a small beeping sound in turn. The drone's internal lights went from red to green, and from a compartment beneath its body, a small data drive emerged. As is our reputation, the brilliant minds of Farim society did our own investigations surrounding Zone S01. It took quite some effort to pierce the blockades, both physical and metaphorical, to uncover what occurred in that galactic space. But eventually we did. Kundali looked at each of her fellow magistrates, then at the gathered audience, I warn you, what you will see is not for the faint of heart. Such is that I invoke the Youngling's Safety Act and bar access to this moment of the broadcast. As her words were said, devices registering those of lower age either shut down or switched off to other channels. Those that could view and desired to witness the siren crimes were allowed to see, though many wished they hadn't. The first recordings were from the natives' perspective. Having artificial satellites above their planet meant they were on their way to eventually becoming a spacefaring species. Upon them, recordings of their cultures, their history, and other events of them were accessed. Soon they discovered what they called themselves, Homo sapiens, humanity, mankind. 
A hollow screen presented the perspective of one of these humans. Soot covered their face, while parts of their clothes were torn. Holding a device to their mouth, they yelled as explosions and gunfire rocked in the background. As you can see, the battle continues to rage at the outskirts of London. The British Army is currently engaged with the invaders, hoping to allow as many people as possible to evacuate from the burning city. Loud horns blared in the distance, making the reporter turned his head towards the direction. The distinct droning was used by the siren to unsettle their enemies. We have confirmation that cities across the world are under attack as well. We also confirm that these things marching across the country are, in fact, a tank rolled close to the reporter and nearly deafened him upon firing. It's starting to get worse as our troops are pushed back. We fear they may not hold out any longer. We'll have to move away before. Look out! White beams sliced across the vehicle, causing it to explode. The camera flew away and landed in an upward angle. In the background, the screams of burning soldiers disturbed those who heard them. Then came loud footsteps. The camera shuddered when one large metal leg stepped on the tank remains, finishing off any hope of survival from those inside it. Static frizzled across the screen. Another transmission, this time an aerial view from a light propeller craft. Fires spread across the human city. Gunfire littered the smoky streets as Siren troops engaged the native resistance. Above here in the sky, planes streaked across the skies, dogfighting the invaders, though many didn't stand a chance against the enemy's advanced crafts. We don't know what they want, but we know what they can do. The loud rumble of jets streaking past the news chopper was picked by the camera. Buenos Aires is burning. These things are beating everyone that tries putting up any resistance to them. Siren battle pods strode across the burning landscape, obliterating any threats that came across their path. These creatures continued to fire at them, with marginal success, as some of their tri-legged machines fell under a hail of constant fire. Yet the siren not only held a technological superiority, but numerical as well. More arrived by dropships, unloading battle machines or soldiers, pot shots from the humans downed some, but it mattered little when there were thousands more waiting in orbit. We'll try to stay on the air as long as we can, but... A loud blast knocked the reporter back. Then the camera spun violently while terrified screams echoed in the background. The feed soon cut as the last shot was of them plummeting into a building. Anger was shared between the magistrates. You invaded without cause, attacked them without any reason. What madness made drove you to commit such a deed? That is not the only thing they did, said Kundali. Right. Ambassador Mirens, the ambassador remained quiet. Instead, he pulled another vial full of that heavenly-tasting brandy. He never raised his head as he took a sip of his choice drink. What else did they do? The Lultian asked. Kundali frowned. Raising her hand to console before her, she played another video. This one was from the perspective of a Siren trooper helmet recorder. Patrolling the desolated streets of what was once a town, the soldier and his squad searched for any signs of resistance. With the night sky above, the terrible rays of that yellow sun were naught but an afterthought. Squeaking metal from broken street lamps pulled his attention. For a moment, he stared at it, longer than he should. Then, another sound. This came from a broken building. He rushed immediately towards the source, breaking down the remains of the door. The council heard his erratic breathing. Some keen-eyed magistrate noticed the shaking of their clawed hands gripping the rifle. The camera pivoted from side to side as the soldier desperately searched for what made the noise. Then, a pan fell from what was the kitchen. He rushed in and saw a surviving human, a young adult male, searching for food. They saw the terrified look of the human as the soldier raised his rifle at him. The human raised his hands in turn, seemingly looking to surrender. A tense standoff followed. The siren's finger scratched upon the rifle's surface as if he felt an itch creeping from it, then to his body. More shaking followed. Then, to the surprise of those who watched, the soldier dropped his weapon. From how the human slightly slagged, he must have felt some relief. You aren't going to eliminate me. Please don't. Hissing was heard as the trooper took of his helmet and dropped it as well. What color remained upon that young man flushed away when he saw the alien's face. No, no. Ah, a guttural snarl rumbled from the soldier before he lunged at the human. Struggling ensued. 
but the human was overpowered. The helmet laid close by picked up the muffled screams of the human, the sound of crunching bone, and finally the satisfied grunts of the soldier. Minutes later, the helmet was picked up and the camera caught sight of the bloodied mouth of the soldier. Gore splattered his cheeks, while the red liquid dripped from his chin. Wiping his face, the siren donned his helmet, stared into the husk of the human, and proceeded to leave the building. Soon after, the feed shut down. One could take a pin drop it, and it would echo louder than a sun-going supernova. Horrified looks, disgusted glances, and bitter eyes befell the ambassador. By this point, he had finished drinking his brandy. A slight headache formed within him. Kundali slowly stood form her seat and stared right into the dark eyes of the ambassador. We understand your kind must feed of the blood of organisms to subsist. Hematophagy is only associated with the siren, an unsettling trait for many. And still, we allowed you a spot within the core galactic unity. As it is forbidden for a sentient being to cannibalize another, we strictly called to attention for you to not feed on the blood of a sentient creature, no matter the reason. Not only did you break this rule, but you brought devastation to a rising species. Besides the anger that she felt, Kundali held another emotion. Confusion. Why? She yelled. Because it is addicting, Myrins answered dryly. Kundali and the rest of the magistrates were taken back by his words. The red blood of those humans is the most delicious thing to come across a siren's mouth. A smooth texture that flows like wine, with a sweetness that puts to shame whatever confection a culinary master can create. All natural, addicting, and deadly. To the surprise of all, Trekpek suddenly keeled over like someone punched his stomach. Human blood grants us a euphoric high. It gives us a sense of invulnerability, but it also boils us from the inside, twists our entrails, shuts down our livers and fries our brains. The ambassador stared at the empty bottle of brandy. Kundali, too, saw it. It hit her. Get a medical team and take the ambassador to a ward, now. Myrins chuckled weakly. He spat out blood of his own. Its orange hue stained the floor. Don't bother. It's already too late. A loud ruckus ensued in the room as medics rushed in to grant aid to the dying man. Guards moved in and began to vacate the premises. Once the hall stood empty, only the magistrates, the medical team, and the security remained. Mirins continued to vomit out his life. Kundali and the others stood close by. The transmission ended. Already uproar soared across all social interactive medias. Mirins weakly looked at Kundali. Ow, our invasion failed all those centuries back. They put up a great fight. Such metal ran hot across their veins, and we drank that fire. We feasted on their life, and it destroyed us in return. We quarantined that zone, but in our haste, we made the mistake of leaving plenty of our equipment in their system. We don't know how many, ug how many were left, but we know that humans continue to survive. Not only survive, but they are flourishing said Kundali. They are the ones who are attacking the colonies. A painful groan rumbled form the ambassador. We tried to fix our mistake. The task force we sent was to finish them off. But not only did we fail, we emboldened them. Mirans shivered. The humans rightfully saw us as monsters. But now, a beast rises from that zone, one that will devour everything for the pain we caused. Mirans wheezed, coughed, then finally lied still. The magistrates exchanged looks, shared thoughts. Each tried to figure out what they should do. I will convene with the syndicate, and together we shall postulate ideas to amicably solve the situation. I recommend, my fellow magistrates, that you do the same. With that, she immediately moved to leave the room. Miss Kundali, the Josks called to her. A few of his blue feathers fell as he rushed to her. For these humans to take on a siren fleet and not only survive but drive them off, is highly concerning. What if, what if they do not wish for peace? Kundali hanged her head low. Wordlessly, she exited the hall. Meanwhile, at the other side of the galaxy, the window shielding retracted, allowing sunlight to enter the bridge of the command ship. Those inside observed the massive undertaking of military assets gathering on Earth's orbit. Fighters and bombers whizzed in formation across the frigates and destroyers. Mainline battleships bristled with guns, while massive carries hauled armies of soldiers and mighty divisions of vehicles. 
Three figures watched as more of their kin arrived from across the Sol system, the Venusians, the Martians, Neptunians, and even the eager Plutonians. Well, guys, if you liked this video and want a particular HFY story, comment below with its title. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.